initiating moisture. Welcome to the Moist Meter. Today we're taking a look at Little Nightmares 2. I was a huge fan of the first game, so I was pretty excited for this one, but I had absolutely no idea that it was coming out anytime soon, so that was a pleasant little surprise from Santa Claus just dropping this bad boy off. And I gotta tell you, I was very happy with it. I was very pleased. I think the game is just as good, if not even better in certain cases, than the first game. Now, I had to refresh my memory on the lore of the first game, because it's been so long since I've played it. So I combed through the sacred text and relearned everything that happened in the first game narratively, so that way I knew exactly where we were starting off in in Little Nightmares 2. And after digesting the full compendium of Little Nightmares universe, I was super drawn into the story once again. And now after completing Little Nightmares 2 and watching the secret ending, because I didn't actually get it myself, I fucked up. Uh, I, I can say with certainty that this this has left me very confused. It's got me just with fingers up my asshole scratching my head. Uh, I am a little lost on the narrative. I'm not too prideful to admit that. There is a lot of moving parts to the Little Nightmares universe, and I'm just having a hard time figuring out where they all connect. I still really enjoyed it. Like th This isn't like a complaint about it at all. I do like ambiguous titles when it comes to the narrative, instead of just like hammering that shit home, making you feel like such a fucking idiot that they have to hold your hand through what's going on. I do like it being up to the interpretation sometime of the player. But in the case of Little Nightmares, I feel like in certain ways, it's almost too open-ended because there's no dialogue, there's no spoken words, so you're just piecing things together based on what you're seeing in the environment and the character's body language and what you're experiencing together. So you're piecing it together as you play through what you're seeing, not what you're hearing. And I guess for me, I just kind of got a little lost on how exactly all these pieces were fitting. I was still, there's still a lot that the narrative was able to surprise me with in terms of like some twists, also where it fits into the universe and all of this. And I was able to understand the big moments and the big things for the most part, but as for how it all fits into the, the puzzle of Little Nightmare, how they put the rectangle in the rectangle hole here, I'm still just a little fucking confused on. But it's not a big deal, still really enjoyed that aspect. The universe of Little Nightmares I find to be beyond fascinating. The art design, the character design, the, the everything visually in this game is so, is so good. It's so unique. It's so well done. And it does what horror games fail to do, which is actually build tension and unnerve you. A lot of the characters, like a bunch of the bad guys you'll see here, are genuinely creepy. And they're designed very well to kind of make your skin crawl a little bit. Like, ooh, this is yucky. I want to get the fuck out of here as quick as possible. And then you try and do that, and then you get, like, absolutely blasted. Your head gets fucking tore off, and they spit down your throat like it gets gruesome and you have to pace yourself you have to just sit there and patiently wait and watch them do their gross shit and then eventually you make your move to stealth past them or solve a puzzle to get by them and it's so rewarding it's so fun i really loved everything about little nightmares too i really did i had a great time playing it I think every puzzle was well designed, there was a lot of different mechanics they were throwing in, sometimes using a flashlight to stun people, sometimes you're teleporting around using television sets, other times you're just using teamwork with six to get around and connect dots and get things to make things move up and down. It's fun. It's just fucking fun. The puzzles aren't exactly brain busters. You don't need a 200 IQ to solve these bad boys. You're not going to solve one of these puzzles and all of a sudden have a third eye open on your forehead and achieve enlightenment. Like, they're not, like, the hardest puzzles in the world, but they're just challenging enough to keep it enjoyable and keep things moving at a steady pace. I don't think anyone's going to get stuck on something for a long time. There are going to be certain things where you're like, oh, where the fuck do I do here? And then maybe 10, 15 minutes later, you're like, yep. That's the solution, and now I feel silly for not having done it right the first time. It's it's uh, no complaints at all when it comes to gameplay. I enjoyed every moment of it. I had a great time exploring the universe, finding some of the hidden things in the universe. There's hats that you can collect, and sometimes even the hat, not to spoil anything, but sometimes the hats may even play a role in getting a couple things done. It's just such a rewarding game. There's really just not a whole lot else like it when it comes to the game design here. It, it's so good. Like, I really can't suck their dick enough about how beautiful the game looks and how macabre the whole thing is. But now this will bring me to where I think people might not like Little Nightmares 2. It's a really short game. It took me just over four hours start to finish to blast through this bad boy. Not that I think that's a bad thing. I have said this multiple times. If the game is only four hours, it better be four really strong hours. And I definitely think the Little Nightmares 2 is. It's also not a $60 game, so you're paying for you're paying less 
for less hours in the game. There's really no replayability. I don't see many people beating the game and be like, can't wait to fucking get back in there and do all that again. Because it's very much a game that you'll experience once, really enjoy, and maybe go back one more time just to get everything for a secret ending to make sure you get every little bit there to digest every piece of lore that you can. And I really think most people are going to want to because I think they've set up a fascinating storyline and universe here with Little Nightmares. So it's just not a game that a ton of people are going to go back and replay. So for that, you're only going to have like four and a half hours of game time. And I know for some reason, a lot of people out there take big issue with that. I see people melt down and whine about it, throw some kind of baby temper tantrum. Oh, this game only has 45 hours worth of gameplay. It's not even worth my time. I'll go spin that instead cruising subreddits. When you say a game is four hours, a lot of people like scoff at that shit for some reason. Uh, another minor complaint I had about the game is there's some bugs in it, a couple glitches, like I softlocked myself once, uh, not that it happened again after that, but I got softlocked hard as fuck right in the beginning, and sometimes when I would swing one of the weapons at an enemy, it would go right through them, or it would go right through the thing that I was aiming at, or just bounce off of invisible nothingness, just get fucking blasted back by the air. So there is times where you will be betrayed by like a bug or two, but it's not super frequent and it's not the worst thing in the world since there's no loading times. So when you fuck up, it just kind of immediately starts over again. So you're not losing a ton of time to like a loading screen or something. But it is something worth pointing out that there are a couple of minor bugs and issues, but nothing that's going to be game ruining. Now, plugging Little Nightmares 2 into the moist meter, I think this bad boy is a very high quality 4.5 hours, so I'm giving it a nice 9 out of 10. I think most people will enjoy it, especially if you're not one of those uh, pretentious elitist gamers that only plays games that have 90 to 100 hours worth of tedious grinding content. You'll appreciate this. I think it's very well made, the puzzles are fun, the universe is great, the, the lore and the themes are very rich. I just, I really enjoyed pretty much everything about it, so... I'd recommend it, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Right now you're probably asking yourself, Damn, how does Charlie look so well-rested and energized? And I'll go ahead and reveal the secret formula here. It's because I slept on a Helix mattress last night. And Helix mattresses are fantastic. Helix mattresses are some very beautiful mattresses that are going to be catered to your unique body type and sleep preferences based on a sleep quiz that Helix will ask you. So the sleep quiz is going to ask you multiple questions to get a feel for what makes you you and match you with the perfect mattress to complement your sleep position, your preferences, and by the time you finish it, you're going to have the mattress of your wet dreams. The Helix mattresses are absolutely fantastic. I highly recommend them. So if you're interested in upgrading your mattress, which I think everyone should have a high quality mattress that they're happy with since you're going to be sleeping on it every night forever. So... I definitely think mattresses are very important. So it's definitely important to have a mattress you're happy with. So definitely check out Helix if you're interested at helixsleep.com slash moist and you can get up to $200 off your Helix mattress. Also, Helix offers a 100-night sleep trial just to make sure the mattress really fits you. Also, shipping and returns are free and extremely convenient, so there's just no need to leave your house. That's helixsleep.com slash moist for up to $200 off of a mattress. That's it. See ya.